everybody, Pterodactyl here, and today's how-to is going to be on an engine swap on this here John Deere LX288. Now let me give you a brief history of this lawn tractor here. Originally this tractor had a, a Briggs and Scranton Vanguard engine on it, V-twin. That pooped down and I put a Briggs Intech V-twin on it. Then that one pooped out because it was used. Then I thought, well, I got a Crawler Command out there. I'll put that command engine on it. Well, I put the Crawler Command on, had it all hooked up, wired up, everything, and found out that that thing was a steamy turtle. So I had to yank that off. Then I thought, well, let me try putting this here opposed twin on here, because this is a good motor. Put that motor on, found out that the hood wouldn't close because this motor's too hot. So I'm going to show you a few things you got to keep in mind when you're doing these engine swaps on these tractors. And I'm going to show you how to wire them up and go over the electrical system. Now and you notice on this here tractor, it's got different holes in it. That's because there was probably different engines you could get on this tractor. You could probably get that Vanguard, you could probably get a Kamasaki, you might even been able to get a a crawler on it. So first thing you gotta keep in mind, crankshaft diameter. Is it the same as the one you're taking off? Another thing, muffkin. Is the muffkin gonna work? Because you may have to adjust it. You could see when I had that command in here, I had to cut and re-weld these muffkin mounts to get it to work. And when I put this Intech engine back on here, because I'm going to put another Intec on it because that's the only motor I got. I'm going to have to redo the muffkin on that. Third, it's got electric PTO. And the engine that you're using, the donor engine, if it's a used engine, unless you're replacing it with the exact same engine, that's the simplest way. But if you're using a different engine, does it got the right charging system on it? So I'm going to go over all that too because if you use the wrong charging system, it ain't going to support this electric PTO and it's going to suck all the juice out of battery. So we're going to go over all that when we do this engine swap. Okay, Mr. Cameraman, come with me. We're going to go out in the yard and find us an engine to put on that John Deere. I think there's a good intact on that Husky. So we'll go take a look at that Husky over there. Okay, I think this engine on this here Husky is going to work on that John Deere. Oh yeah, this is that 20 horse Intech. The only problem is it don't have the right charging system, but I'm going to show you how to, how to convert that to the right charging system for that electric PTO clutch. So I'm going to pull this motor off and we're going to put this on that tractor. Ah, you got a good eye. I'll take 250 for that one. Ronnie Jurgenstein? Why would I pay you $250 for an engine that's mine? This is my used mower lot. I'm out here trying to make deals. How'd you get in here? There's a hole in the fence back there. I had to snake my way through. That ain't gonna fly with me, Ronnie. And I'll tell you one thing that's gonna be flying, and that's gonna be you. Ah! 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 I know I'm messed up, but can't we make some sort of deal here? I I'll split all my profits with you. 95.5. 95.5? I don't think I like that deal. I got a better deal for you, Ronnie. How about 100% of you go over that fence? No! Uh, uh, no! Nah, nah, yeah! Uh, yeah! Uh, no! Nah, uh, 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 What the heck are you doing? Slipper, good thing you showed up. I need your help. 
I need you to help me get an engine off of this tractor back here. Well, uh, I got a bad back, so uh, I don't think I'm going to be much help. I don't want to hear your excuses about your back. Get in here and help me, or you're going to end up like this guy. Man, this thing is freaking Yeah, heavy. it's heavier for me slippers. You could put that coffee mug down, you know, once in a while. Got a lot of spill my drink. Yeah. I guess I did most of the lifting here. I don't know. It felt like I was carrying a pretty big weight. You're gonna end up over that fence like Ronnie. <laughs> Alright. As I said earlier, I did have one of these engines in here before. I gotta make sure the muffkin is gonna line up. Okay, I may not have to do too much adjusting. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the engine bolts in, and then we're gonna go from there. Okay, I got the motor bolted in. I got lucky and the muffler lined up, so I didn't have to mess with the muffkin. Now this engine, that I took out had the starter on it with the solenoid piggybacked on it. So now I gotta put a solenoid on it. So I'm gonna use a three post solenoid because this one grounds. Because I only got one wire, the trigger wire. So I need a grounding solenoid. So I'm gonna use this three post solenoid and a little short cable and I'll be able to hook up the starter. And I have to make the swap, I have to put the higher amperage alternator and voltage regulator on it because this has got electric PTO. So one nice thing about Briggs and Scranton is all these parts interchange. So I can take the alternator off of this and put this on, plug that in, and it's going to work. And I'm going to show you. Okay, I got solenoid. Uh, mounted. I mounted it right here. You may have to find a location for years. And uh, then I got all these wires and stuff on here and I, I don't know where any of this stuff goes. This was a bad idea doing this video. I, I, sake! I know where that wires go. Alright. This is the charge wire. This is the one that's going to go back to the tractor. So I'm going to put that to the positive side of the battery. I'm gonna hook that one there to the battery. And then this is the trigger wire, this purple one, and that's the one that tells the solenoid to make the connection. And then this will be my little short cable that's gonna run from here to here. So I'm gonna get that hooked up and then I'm gonna try to figure out where these wires go. Okay, I got this all hooked up. And I got the brake on. I'm gonna see if it's gonna crank. Okay, it cranks over. So I know that's right. So now I'm gonna move on to changing out the charging system. Okay, I pulled the cover off and exposed it all the wiring into this motor. And I'm gonna show you how to top flywheel. When you do this, when you go to put this back on, make sure you get that nut tight, because if you don't get that nut tight, you're going to shear that key, it's going to throw the timing off. So if you're using hand tools, make sure that that nut is tight. Now i got to find a good spot to get this pry bar so I can knock this flywheel off. Oh, yeah, right there. Hey, thank you, Mr. Cameraman. So you need a pry bar, slippers, there you go, Jim. and a big hammer. Pry up on it, and give it some good blows right in the center. Oh. There we go. We didn't need that fin anyway. I got another one of these out in the junk pile. Alright, there's the alternator. While you're at it, might as well clean all them boogers out of that flywheel I'll clean all that out plus you know what else we got on this we got one of them shutoff valves on the carburetor 
So we need to figure out which wire that is so we can wire that in. So when we turn the key on, that's going to open that valve so this engine will start when we put the gas to it. All right, now, oh, coming along pretty good there, Terrell. Shut up, slipper. I got this all removed for the routing of the wires of this. I got this to take this off. So we're going to pull this out. Got to pull this dipstick off. Turn it out of the way a little bit here. Now, I could tell Fluffy the Rat had been in here <laughs> and say Fluffy doesn't chew down them wires. So, he must have been out making me some money. So, I got to fix those wires. But, these are the two wires. This black one's the kill wire that's going to kill the motor. And this gray one's the one that's going to turn that solenoid on. Now, I don't have a plug to match this on this tractor. So I'm just going to cut this plug off and put some pull-apart connectors on there. Okay, I got the new higher output alternator mounted on it. Now that other alternator, the wires were running out this way, if you remember. I had to run all the wires out this way because it's going to be easier to make these other connections. So you need to check all that where the wires go. Now another thing, I ran them under here. So you want to make sure your wires don't get pinched. And then I ran the other wire, the kill wire for the engine and the one for the fuel solenoid on the carburetor. I ran them up around this way. You don't want anything under that flywheel that could get caught in there and get ripped out. Now, the reason I ran them over here too is this cover has got the holes in it for the voltage regulator to mount to but there's no nuts on the back. So you could put nuts on the back or you could weld them on there if you have that capability, but that voltage regulator has to be grounded. If it's not grounded, if you got it dangling, it ain't gonna work, it has to be grounded. Now I'm lucky enough that I own a lawnmower shop, so I just went out and got me a cover with the two things on there for the voltage regulator. They already got the captured nuts on there. This one doesn't have them. And another thing I got lucky on. The original engine on this uh, mower had a, a oil switch on it. Tell you when the oil got low. This motor does. It's got the oil switch on it. So I'm going to be able to hook that back up. So it'll tell if the oil's low. So now I'm going to go ahead and put that cover on and mount the voltage regulator and then we're going to make the rest of these connections. Okay, so whenever you do any of these engine swaps, if you've got an engine on it already and you're replacing it with a different engine, when you go to disconnect all them wires, tag them. Get some white tape or some masking tape and write on them where they go. Figure out where they go and mark them all. Now, I knew where most of these went already because I'd already done this a couple times. I knew that this was the charge wire that's going to come off of here. So I, what I did is I just cut this end off and hooked it on there. I knew that this was the wire for the solenoid ahead of time because I had them marked. So mark all that stuff ahead of time. It'll save you a headache. But in case you don't, you can get out Mr. Teslite. Remember Mr. Teslite? Hi, Mr. Teslite. Hi, Terrell. You gonna do a test with me? I sure am, Mr. Teslite. Are you gonna clamp me to the negative side of the battery? I sure am. So clamp him to the negative side of the battery. And then I'm gonna touch it to here because this is the one that's going to the solenoid, the fuel solenoid. So when I turn the key on, the light lights up. So I know that's the fuel solenoid one. So you may have to perform some tests if you need to. Okay, I'm done with you, Mr. Testline. Okay, Tom, put me back in the drawer. So I got all this hooked up. And then let's see if this engine's gonna start. Okay, another, another thing I got lucky on is this has got a separate choke and a separate throttle. So I got lucky that this motor's got a separate choke and throttle on it. 
So I think I need to go pay, play the lottery because I've been getting lucky on this engine for a while. All right, I got the throttle cable hooked in. So I'm going to show you how to adjust it properly. I got the throttle all the way up on fast. So I'm going to pull this back because that's fast. And then I'm going to tighten this down. All right, now I'm going to hook up the choke. I'm going from underneath. I'm going to push that all the way that way and tighten her up. Try to start this lawnmower, see if it fires up. Rat slippers? Oh, yeah, let's see what happens. Well, looks like it needs a fuel pump. That's, you know, used engine. This is what you're going to get. Okay, I put a new fuel pump on that one was leaking. I put the deck and uh, pulleys and, the, and belts and everything back on, and I got the muffkin uh, shrouds on there, and I got slippers holding the meter. That's right. So I'm going to, we're going to look at the meter, and we're going to check to make sure it's charging. So I'm going to start it up. seen the meter was going up when I kicked the blade down put it under a load so if I was you and I was doing one of these engine swaps I'd go ahead and put a set of spark plugs in it change the oil uh, put a new air filter in it probably pop this cover off and make sure fluffy the rat didn't build a nest in there <laughs> and then I hope all this information I've given you helps you if you do one of these swaps. Now, I got pretty lucky on this one. Some are more difficult than others, but I hope all this information helped. And as always, there's your dinner. Hello, hello, sir. Wake up, I gotta go, come on. Let's go, wake up. Come on, dude, wake up. I gotta get, well, whatever, I warned you. I'm out of here.